This morning, Adam Goods named Australian of the Year for his achievements in the AFL and his commitment to fighting racism. I believe racism is a community issue which we all need to address and that's why racism stops with me. Also on Weekend Breakfast, Paralympians, entertainers and a cook. Hundreds of Australians recognised on the honours list for service to, to the country. A nation divided, bitter clashes leave dozens dead in Egypt, three years on from the uprising that toppled Hosni Mubarak. Sarah Stora and Lee Kernigan, the big winners at Tamworth's Country Music Awards. And after two finals losses, Li Na becomes the first Chinese woman to be crowned Australian Open champion. Good morning, it's Australia Day, Sunday the 26th of January. I'm Kumi Taguchi. And I'm Richard Davies. Well, let's get the latest news headlines now with Michelle Rafferty. Good morning. AFL star Adam Good says he'll use his profile from the Australian of the Year Awards to get people talking about racism. The Sydney Swans legend won recognition last year for standing up to a 13-year-old girl who made a racist slur at him during an AFL game at the MCG. He spoke to us this morning. The biggest message that um, you know, it shows to anyone out there is that if you really believe in, in, in who you are and, and what you represent as a, as a person, then um, it can lead you absolutely anywhere. And I, I believe that um, standing up for who you are and what you believe in um, is, is a very, very courageous thing to be able to do. And um, I've got no doubt that being able to do that last year and, and help other people and inspire other people um, to do the same... Uh, has made me uh, very humble by, by that situation. There's been more violence in Egypt as pro- and anti-government demonstrators take to the streets on the third anniversary of the revolution that saw the demise of Hosni Mubarak. There have been several exposure, explosions as well as fatal clashes between the police and protesters. It was a day of joyous celebration and one of defiant protest. <laughs> From early in the morning, a tight security cordon was established around Tahrir Square, the epicentre of the events that brought Hosni Mubarak down. But gradually, people were allowed to pass through, as long as they were demonstrating in support of the interim government and the military that put it in power. Those protesting the military-backed takeover were kept well away from the square on a number of occasions being forcibly dispersed by the police, armed with new laws forbidding unauthorised protest, as well as with tear gas. And while one Egyptian is arrested by police, other Egyptians stand by and cheer the action. A people who united to depose a president three years ago could now not be more divided. On the one side, those who believe the military-backed interim government has saved the revolution. On the other, those who maintain their hopes of democracy are now being shattered. Still in Egypt, and detained Australian journalist Peter Grester has released his first public letter since being jailed by Cairo authorities a month ago. He's vowing to continue fighting for freedom of speech in Egypt. Mr Grester and two Egyptian producers from the Al Jazeera network are accused of collaborating with the Muslim Brotherhood. In the letter, Mr Grester describes being held in the cell for nine days straight. The first day of face-to-face -face Syrian peace talks have wrapped up in Geneva. Syria's government and opposition have finally met face-to-face -face at the UN-sponsored talks. They're aimed at getting an agreement for local ceasefires to allow humanitarian aid to be delivered. This week's discussions will also focus on a transition of power. Geneva has brought no relief yet from the agonies of Syria's civil war. This is the latest fighting in the Daraya suburb of Damascus. Regime forces are dropping the much-feared barrel bomb. It's hoped that Geneva will bring a ceasefire here and in many other places. In coming here, the regime was forced to accept the Geneva One declaration for a transfer of power. 
But the government doesn't accept. That means President Assad should go. This is a big, a big lie when we speak about uh, President Assad to step down. This is not part of Geneva 1. This is a misinterpretation of the provisions of uh, Geneva 1. For the opposition, getting rid of Mr. Assad is the entire premise of these talks. A first day of meetings hasn't moved the two sides closer together or eased the rhetoric. You know, dictators, usually, they don't like to listen. But today, they had to listen to us and to the voice of Syrian people, that Syrian people, they want transition from dictatorship to democracy. For the UN mediator, just getting regime and opposition into the same room was an achievement. But he knows there's much more to do. We hope that they will exercise their influence on all sides inside Syria and in the region to you know, get out of the ditch that uh, they are in and uh, work uh, with us. These discussions have been inching forward, but so far only because they've avoided the main issue. That is the future of President Assad and of his regime. As many as 130,000 people have lost their lives over that question. It won't be solved quickly or easily here. There appears to be a breakthrough in Ukraine's marathon political standoff. The country's opposition leader has indicated he'll accept the role of Prime Minister. The offer was made to him by the Ukraine's embattled president, who has faced violent street protests against his rule, including the storming of Parliament this weekend. The acceptance of the Prime Minister's role is conditional on the release of a former PM who was jailed in 2011. To the US and three people have been shot dead in a Baltimore shopping centre in Maryland. Police are now allowing shoppers to leave the centre after an earlier lockdown. One of the dead is believed to be the shooter. We had officers quickly get into the area and we were able to identify three victims at an upper level store in the Columbia Mall. Right now we have many, many people still in the mall that have secured themselves inside stores. Our SWAT teams with a lot of support from agencies throughout the state, at the local, state and federal level, frankly, um, are going through as we are holding this press conference. They are inside continuing to clear that mall to make sure there are no more victims. We, we do not think there are, but we want to make sure there are not. And to get those people that have uh, self-sheltered in place out and make sure none of them have any injuries, uh, either from the shooting. Again, we don't think there are any. Um, but also any injuries that may have occurred in that process, that panic when, when people do shelter. So far, eight bodies have been recovered from the remains of a fire-ravaged retirement home in the Canadian province of Quebec. Police say 24 people remain missing, but it's not possible to confirm a final death toll. They believe up to 30 people may have lost their lives. Authorities engage in recovery operations and have been using steam machines to melt ice caused by the vast amounts of water that were used to put out the flames. A man's been shot dead in Sydney's southwest in the early hours of the morning. Distressed relatives gathered at the street in Canley Vale where the man was found on a footpath. Paramedics tried to save him, but he died at the scene. The victim, who is aged in his 20s, is yet to be formally identified, and police are appealing for anyone with information to come forward. A huge migration is underway in China ahead of a Lunar New Year celebrations. Railroads, highways and airports in many parts of the country have reached capacity as hundreds of millions of people make their trip home for China's most important holiday. The Year of the Horse starts on January the 31st. For many people in China, the celebrations are the only opportunity each year to reunite with their families. There were chaotic scenes in Miami, Florida this morning as pop star Justin Bieber left town. He was mobbed by media and fans as he headed for a vehicle waiting to take him to the airport. The teenager's on bail after being arrested for allegedly street racing while under the influence of drugs and alcohol. His destination is not yet known.
Let's take a look at the satellite. A low trough over Western Australia is generating heavy thunderstorms. A trough stretching from the Northern Territory to Queensland is triggering thunder and showers. The monsoon trough over the country's north is also producing storms. Looking around the country, showers and storms for most of Queensland except the southwest, very warm to hot in the east and west. Light early showers along the New South Wales coast, sunny, mild to warm conditions elsewhere. Victoria will be mostly sunny and dry throughout, becoming warmer during the day with light to moderate northerly winds. Generally sunny and dry throughout Tasmania. It'll be warming up throughout the day. South Australia will be dry apart from the odd storm in the north, very hot in the north and the south. Warm and stormy conditions in Western Australia's north, hot in the south with showers and storms along the west coast. And in the Northern Territory, warm temperatures and showers and storms throughout, heaviest in the north. And looking ahead to tomorrow's forecast for the capital cities, possible showers in Brisbane, mostly sunny in Sydney, sunny in Melbourne, Hobart and Adelaide, mostly sunny in Perth and some showers in Darwin.